Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome. Uh, the date today is, let me mark that down, 7-7. Uh, seven, seven, yes. Year of Our Savior, 2018. The title of this video is Evolution mm -hmm. slash Big Bang slash Heliocentrism. Evolution, Big Bang, Heliocentrism. And the reason why we put these together is because it is the unholy trinity. And what I realize is that very, very few Christians actually really believe in the entire book of the Bible. Uh, we realize that secular and Christian alike will, uh, will attack uh, those that truly believe in um, biblical creationism. And we've covered biblical creationism uh, about Genesis 1-1, through Revelation 21 that the Bible is about heaven and earth and that's where we live that is our homeland and the heaven and earth are connected and so heaven is the firmament firmament mean firm not soft and there's water below and water above the firmament and in the firmament we have the stars we have the two great lights, which is the sun and the moon, and they were put up there for to shine light upon the earth mm -hmm. and to be a big time clock mm -hmm. for us. And it's amazing that very few Christians believe because they run to science, which is, God knew this. That's why he put science in the seventh purification of God's word in 1 Timothy 6, verse 20, you most likely you won't find the word science in the Roman Catholic Bibles, but that doesn't surprise me. Uh, so, and also, these two words, science and planets, since planets would be in 2 Kings 23, verse 5. And that is what's used to create a, a counterfeit cosmology. And the counterfeit cosmology with heliocentrism has led to the Big Bang, which has led to evolution. And evolution is taught in schools and college. And going through, uh, I, have a, I have a level 16 degree education. Not that that means anything, ladies and gentlemen. But what I'm saying is that I was taught evolution in college. And uh, I was never told the entire, uh, I knew that Darwin uh, promoted evolution, but I never knew. I heard the origin of species, but they never gave me the full title, which I believe is a form of dishonesty. If you're going to preach evolution, preach the whole title. The origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Might makes right, right? The strong survive and you kill off the weaker. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. And that was put forth in 1859 and realized that most of the 99% of the Roman Catholic Bibles that 90 over 90% of the Christian church uses today uh, was based upon a counterfeit Greek text. And that is linked to uh, Cardinal Newman, who was a, an Anglican priest who went back to Rome then you have the Oxford movement, and you got Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort were greatly influenced by Charles Darwin, which means they're greatly influenced by the Big Bang Theory, which means they're greatly influenced by heliocentrism, because without helio, or the Greek uh, sun god Helios, without this sun worship system, you would not have Big Bang, and you would not have evolution that put forth in tampered with the Word of God. And so we see a lot of stuff put forth in the name of science, which is, uh, there's a lot of fraud uh, that has been put forth in the name of science. But you find that over 90% of Christian pastors and theologians will viciously attack those who believe in a geocentric or uh, flat earth, believe in this book, but they will run, and they won't believe it, they'll run to science to get their authority. And as we've clearly said, there's heaven and earth, and that is a geocentric model, meaning that the earth is connected to heaven, and there's water above the heaven, the firmament, 
And so what's in the heaven is what's in the heaven, ladies and gentlemen. 99% of Christians won't be able to identify true cosmology. Stephen, how many suns are there according to the Word of God? One. How many moons are there according to the Word of God? Just one. All right. Are, is the sun and the moon, are they of the same size? Yeah. Okay. Is the sun and moon larger than the uh, stars? The sun and moon, are they larger yeah. than the stars? Yeah. Yes. So that, I mean, Stephen just said right out of the Word of God, Genesis 1, 14 through 16, that is biblical cosmology. But 99% of Christians won't believe that. They'll say, no, 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 there's a sun is a, is a small star, and the stars are infinite galaxies far, far away, and the moon is smaller than the sun, and it's not a light, and that's the reality. And then there's planets. Well, where's planets mentioned in Genesis 1? The whole chapter of Genesis 1, where's planets in there? You can't find it. Yeah, I know where we can find it. 2 Kings, right? Mm -hmm. We got 2 Kings 23, verse 5. 2 Kings 23, verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests. Idolatrous priests in the name of science and planets. He was the Baal priest, whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them that also that burn incense unto the Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, to the planets, yes, to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. Folks, this is not of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is the Lord of Jesus Christ. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He's the first begotten of the dead, according to the Word of God. So when we're looking at evolution, remember that if we believe in the Bible, geocentrism, we know that it's a snow globe. It's a self-contained system. We know that flat earth, what? nullifies what? Evolution and aliens. But 99% of pastors and theologians will not have an explanation when they see some pretty crazy stuff in the dome or in the firmament or vault or arch of the sky. They won't understand it. They won't understand that these beings working in a partnership and league with the governments of this earth have united against the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great deception, ladies and gentlemen. So, I got a comment here, brother. You know, as far as evolution goes, you know how they said, well, we are so close to being compared to, to, um, to chimpanzees that were like 98.7%. Oh, what, yeah. what they don't tell you is they take out 18% of the chimp DNA. It's thrown out. Um, and they take 28% of our DNA that's thrown out. That's so far off that they just discard oh, they it completely. Removed it. So they've removed 46% of the DNA before they do the comparison. And what's left is 98.7% like chimps. So it's just a fabrication of numbers. It's just dishonest. It's a farce. It's dishonest. And that's what you find. Science is continually putting forth fraud. And mutations cannot add new genetic information. They can't. Well, wait a minute. We see uh, in the movies, see, there's very little difference between science and science fiction. And I'm talking about pseudoscience, 1 Timothy 6, verse 20. What do we see in the movies? We see evolution and mutation, do we not? Yeah. And when you mutate, you evolve. You're evolving what? Into a god into a superhero, well, supergirl, uh, ant, wasp, I mean, you name all the Marvel comics, you know, this, uh, all, Thor. Huh? Thor. Thor, absolutely. So, uh, understanding that evolution, this science, a lot of these people are, um, they hate the Lord Jesus Christ, they hate the Bible, and it isn't all based upon the scientific method. Um, you have a gentleman, a physicist by the name of James Clerk Maxwell. And what he talked about is because when you're dealing with the Big Bang Theory as a result of heliocentrism and evolution, it violates what? The second law of thermodynamics, which means that things start alive 
and then they work to em entropy. You well, have that's to have life to create life, yeah. Yes, you um, need yeah. life to create life, and then it starts out, and then eventually decays. Well, that's totally opposite from the religion of evolution, Big Bang, and heliocentrism. It's a religion. It requires a lot of belief. Is because they're saying that nothing created everything. So it started with entropy or nothing, and then it moved towards life. Well, the idea that the universe was nothing and a bunch of nothing exploded and created everything. I mean, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. This is a religion, ladies and gentlemen. You can't prove it. So it's interesting that you have a physicist, and he says, you know, Clark, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, physicist, he, he says heat is molecules moving faster. He devised a theory. Remember, a lot of this is just about theories that the second law of thermodynamics, meaning everything moves towards entropy, uh, could be avoided through information. Thus enters Maxwell's demon sitting on this connecting side of two boxes adjacent to each other. So this is a great physicist, ladies and gentlemen. And so you have two boxes sitting right next to each other, and you have this demon looking down, and he starts sorting uh, the molecules. And what he does is a demon would observe the faster molecules and the slower ones opening the door, allowing the faster molecules to enter the, uh, the one box, which is the heater, and the slower box to enter the other box, which would be the cooler. The information about molecules would avoid the second law of thermodynamics, thus producing Maxwell demon called the Big Bang Theory. So, as you see, there's a lot of crazy stuff put forth in the name of science, ladies and gentlemen. Evolution, Big Bang, heliocentrism. So, uh, continuing here, we're talking about sun. You know, when you're dealing, you'll find most Christians and theologians and, and the secular world, they're in league together that they run and say, well, you know, the sun equals stars. And, then, you know, it's a small star and there's billions and therefore it's insignificant. Uh, so that's really interesting. Uh, the Bible is, um, is very revealing. So opposition against heliocentrism, boy, if we had actually some <coughs> pastors and theologians, Christian pastors and theologians, remember that opposition against heliocentrism, because the worldview since the beginning of recorded history they all believed in a flat earth or geocentric model, including Hebrew or biblical cosmology. Up until then, the last 500 years, with the Copernican revolution, revolution means he revolted against the mainstream opinion. So Martin Luther, was he a geocentrist? Flat earther? Yes, he was. Was John Calvin a geocentrist to flat earther? They didn't look at themselves that way, but it was so common knowledge that it they didn't even question it because they believed in the Word of God. Did the translators of the King James Bible, were they geocentrist? Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we move forward here, uh, we see that the Jesuits were the instruments to implement this revolutionary concept of heliocentrism, which basically removed God from the equation. Because it's really hard to picture God um, when you're dealing with an infinite outer space and there's just nothing out there forever and ever and ever and then you have the the third rock from the sun you know that the the earth is supposedly is a sphere hanging out with the pagan god mercury and hanging out with the pagan goddess venus and hanging out with the pagan god mars and jupiter and saturn and they're all uh, circling around the sun sun worship ladies and gentlemen so this is all designed to show that the Bible is wrong. It's an attack against the Word of God. So we see that the Big Bang Theory today is a leading explanation about how the universe began. At its simplest, it talks about the universe as we know it, starting with a small singularity. Go ahead, my brother. Well, Francis Crick was the discoverer of DNA. And he says the chance that protein, just by chance, could come into existence is one-tenth to the 260th power. One-tenth to the 260th power. So you're looking and at... And one-tenth to the 50 is impossible. Okay, one-tenth to the 50 is impossible. So basically, it's impossible that 
a protein, just a protein, not a whole strain, just a protein of DNA. Wow, that's fascinating. It happened by chance. And that's according to Francis Crick, and he's the, the person who found DNA. Found who's DNA. Discovered yeah. DNA. Right. Folks, there's a creator. And so somebody's lying, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's not telling the truth. Somebody's not telling the truth. Now remember, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. And we say that the word of God is the truth. And if you study to show yourself approved, if you just don't go out there and lash out and attack people, and if you would actually study, you would find that the Bible is a geocentric book. There's only heaven and earth, ladies and gentlemen. And in the firmament, you have the sun and the moon and the stars. And they're rotating above us, and you have the North Star that's, connect, that's in line with the North Pole. And all, everything else rotates around it in a circuit. And that's been going on since the, since the beginning of creationism. So we're promoting creationism, biblical There's creationism. One other thing that I wanted to point out, Heckel's yes. fake drawings, H-A-E-C-K-E-L-S was the name of the professor. Who? Professor Heckel's. Oh, Heckel's, okay. He's the one that made fake drawings of embryos that are still used in textbooks today. He made baby embryos look like dogs, fish, and etc. And actually, they, so he, he was even kicked out of his own university. I'm not sure what university it was, but that's still shown in books today. So it's just, all it is is his fancy. It's his just, fake drawings that it's to, a, it's to make the embryos look like they're, see, that looks like a dog, that looks like a fish. So it's, a, it's just imaginary. Yeah. It's, imaginary. it's not real. They, they were supposed to be real. They're taught as being real. Wow. Wow. Okay. Brainwashing of America. So creationists believe, uh, there are some creationists, ladies and gentlemen, that um, believe in, so without a globe circling the earth, circling the sun, through the far reaches of space, we do not have the Big Bang. Without the Big Bang, we do not have evolution. So evolution and Big Bang, they could not come into existence without heliocentrism. That's why it's the unholy trinity. And it's, really, it's just really a shame that you have so many Christians that do not understand this concept. And really most of them won't because they're indoctrinated and they've been so watered down with Roman Catholic Bibles that they don't care about doctrine, ladies and gentlemen. You show the differences between the King James Bible and the Roman Catholic Bibles that are put forth and most don't care. Yeah. They're just lukewarm. And many times Occam's razor can be applied, which is the simplest answer is the truth. Use right. a lot of your common sense. Right, which is you look out and you see that the sun and moon are, that are above the horizon, they look the same size. So guess what, if they look the same size, the simplest answer is they are the same size according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Without the Big Bang, so without evolution, we're more likely to accept creation as an act of intelligent design by divine creation. Uh, Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic Church accepts evolution. The Roman Catholic Church is connected to the Nazi Party. Operation Paperclip for Cold War Space Program. Remember that you also have Trump has just put forth what? The Space Force. You know why? <laughs> In my opinion, is because so many people are yep. waking up to biblical creationism. I'm going to call it for what it is. Biblical creationism is geocentric flat earth creationism ladies and gentlemen that's what the bible teaches so we preach what the bible says you know even mark twain said it's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them that they've been fooled it's so true it really is it is so true so um we see that uh we have operation paperclip so uh all right then we have nasa marshall space program Werner von braun then we have Operation Paperclip, 350 uh, German scientists, intelligence agents given visas and high paying jobs. Go ahead, my brother. Well, the Earth is not a spinning globe at 1,039 miles per hour, nor is the Earth 4.9 billion years old. Absurdities that you were taught, which stem from the Masonic Royal Society in London. That's Dr. Lawrence Cohen, ex Mossad agent, U.S. intelligence. Wow. So that's an insider speaking the truth. Mm hmm. Wow. Charles Darwin himself in 1872 said, To suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest possible degree. Yeah, that's just the eye. Just the eye. So, but most people today, their religion is 
evolution, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, and evolution came about through heliocentrism. Without heliocentrism, you have, you have no Big Bang and you have no evolution. So we have monopoly on space and astronomy, uh, NASA public spa face of space, NASA's religion backed by the U.S. government. The Vatican plays a crucial role in the astronomy. Hundreds of years own, they have owned more telescopes and observatories than any organization, university, or government. NASA and the Vatican jointly own Lucifer, or Lucis, the world's largest binocular telescope in Arizona, uh, in the United States. The Vatican Observatory is one of the oldest astronomical institutes in the world, and space is not real, ever-expanding universe. Creationists don't believe. Most creationists have yoked themselves with heliocentrism, and they don't believe the real Genesis account. ETs, aliens, Big Bang, produce life on Earth. We are small and insignificant. Surely life exists on somewhere else. Ancient aliens are our gods, right? Mm -hmm. This is all being put forth. You know why? Because of heliocentrism, ladies and gentlemen, you would not be able to put this forth in a geocentric perspective. Without the globe model, the Big Bang model wouldn't be considered. Without the Big Bang model, the theory of evolution wouldn't be considered. Without the theory of evolution, extraterrestrial seeding mankind wouldn't be considered. Without, without all these lies, people would start thinking about their creator. They would. And without evolution, remember, it's the preservation of the favored races in the struggle for life. We had probably the most bloodshed in the 20th century because of evolution, right? You have Hitler who was really big in evolution. He was also a big proponent in theosophy. Also, the Japanese were influenced by evolution. That's why you didn't want to be a POW during World War II no. because the Japanese were absolutely uh, um, vicious, ruthless is the word I was looking for, uh, to the POWs. Yeah. So all of this puts forth, and this whole aspect of viewing people as animals. You notice that evolution views us as animal and not as a man. You notice that in the Bible it makes a distinction between man and the animal kingdom. But not in evolution, not in the science community today, through heliocentrism, Big Bang, and evolution. And you have people go, well, I don't believe in evolution or Big Bang, but you believe in heliocentrism. You're yoking yourself to the unholy trinity. So, and that's the reason why people get so vicious, because that is their religion. And when you attack somebody's religion, the, uh, the gloves come off, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times. And the vitriol comes forth from uh, certain pastors and theologians is uh, quite remarkable. I praise God for it. Uh, because we should expect persecution from Christians and from the secular world. We should, because standing on the Word of God, we are creationists. I, I challenge you to prove me that there is anything else where we, where we live other than heaven and earth out of the Word of God. And what's in the firmament? You have pastors go, oh, you know, in the firmament and out of the firmament, uh, you know, it's the same thing. And, no, it isn't. You're biblically ignorant. When it says in the firmament, there's water above the firmament. What does above mean? It means there's water above the firmament. All right. It's pretty easy, ladies and gentlemen. A child can understand this. So moving forward, we're going to talk all about evolution. And we're going to talk about this because you're like, well, Chris, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is heliocentrism was a Trojan horse that deviated and disconnected us from God, that yep. hid God and discredited the Bible. And most people are like, well, you know, and so today we have a generation of lukewarm Christians that God really can't use. You're like, oh, I really love Jesus and I'm feeling it. It's like, well, what about sound doctrine? I don't care about doctrine. I don't care about that. Jesus Christ doesn't care about doctrine. He does. Because there's mention in the Bible of doctrines of devils. And I'm here to say that heliocentrism is a doctrine of demons or devils. It is. It totally deviates. And what's so amazing is you have 
uh, theologians and pastors that are so historically ignorant, they don't even understand that biblical or Hebrew cosmology is geocentric. It always has been. That's why you have universe. You have heaven connected to earth. And the universe is one verse, is everything is the lights are, are rotating or turning above us. They've been doing it for a very, very long time. All right, so moving forward, life, then they say, well, you know, this is uh, E.T. and aliens and Big Bang, and they're going to be our creators. Uh, you have Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard saying the same thing, right? Jack Parsons, without Jack Parsons, the disciple of Aleister Crowley, you would have no NASA that you run to that you elevate above the Word of God, right? Jack Parsons was into sex magic. There's a lot of bad stuff. Look at what Aleister Crowley did doing sex magic. Sodomy, pedophilia, pederastry, even possibly child sacrifice. All right. So life is supposedly evolved somewhere. So you have Hollywood, science fiction, NASA, Disney, contact with E.T., life, uh, fearful but welcome, right? All of this stuff, everyone has bought the lie. Christians, even creationist Christians that do not recognize the biblical cosmology of a geocentric flat earth model. Nobody's allowed to get on TV if they talk about the flat earth. They're not, you know, no. they're, they're shut out. They're shut out. Why? Why, are, why is everybody so afraid? Oh, they go, oh, well, it's a, it's a distraction. Why would preaching the word of God be a distraction? Why are you so afraid of the creation account? Why are so many people afraid of the creation account? Well, we'll end this, this video on 2 Thessalonians 2.11, that God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that's what happened. If you don't want to embrace the whole book of the Bible, God's going to send a strong delusion. So we're saying, come out of the matrix, come out of the womb of Isis, come into the living word of Jesus Christ. Accept the free gift. Thank you.